the latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. It's even a part of our mission statement. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to another edition of Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here with us each and every single week. No matter how you might consume this show, lots of cool new ways out there. Head on over to ami.ca slash double tap and you'll be able to find out where you can catch episodes of this show, of course, on YouTube and all our social media. Check out at Double Tap Canada. I am Mark Flalo with Stephen Scott by my side. Stephen, we're diving into a topic this week that is so familiar yet seems so foreign and that is the metaverse. Ooh. I feel like I need a big announcer, guys. Yeah. Metaverse. metaverse. What does it mean to you? Like, what is it, what is, when I say metaverse, you know, based on the fact that we've seen people like Mark Zuckerberg take the stage and rename their entire company Meta and talk about this metaverse. And uh, then we hear Satya Nadella a couple days later at Microsoft's big Ignite conference talk about their version of the metaverse. What is your version of the metaverse? What do you understand about it? Well, do you know, I go back to one of our previous Double Tap TV episodes when we talked to Greg Sullivan from Microsoft about um, the HoloLens concept and how that works. And Greg said something really uh, interesting to me and it stuck with me in that we will go from a, a place where we are just now, where we are staring at screens, just little rectangular screens in front of our face, and actually going away from that to the entire internet around us. And when you say that to people, there's a kind of a, what does that mean? But then think about things like shopping, think about you know all the experiences we do online, um, being in the world around us through the metaverse. That sounds quite exciting. Uh, so that's what metaverse means to me. It's kind of taking everything from the phone. And I think shopping, I, mean, I love shopping online. Uh, you know, the idea of doing that in an accessible way uh, through the metaverse sounds pretty cool. Yeah, well, the way they could describe it, like the way that Mark Zuckerberg and Satya Nadella kind of describe it is that it's just, you know, a 3D environment that you are immersed into with whether it's VR or augmented reality glasses. And instead of being in a physical environment walking down the street, you're in a virtual street and you still see storefronts. You could still go look in windows and, and shop for things. And it really you know brings up this question in my mind with do they do they have a do they know something that I don't know? Like, is the world that we live in that bad physically that they need to recreate it digitally? Is that where it's going? Or is it or is it this leap? which our guest, you know, who's coming on the show later on and will talk to us about, is this is this just someone trying to get ahead of where they think the world is going, so they're trying to make their claim on territory now? I, I think there's a little bit of both in there. I think we're all going to end up in the world of WALL-E, to be totally honest. I think we'll leave some robots to clean the place up after we've all disappeared off on the spaceship. And, you know, we'll use the metaverse as a way to remember the good old days of walking down the high street. Um, yeah, maybe that's it. I think also it's just an opportunity to sell more kit, let's be frank about it, and, you know, wrap it up in a new environment. Uh, the technology is getting there to the point where we can achieve all this. Uh, it seems like the next logical step, the idea of being able to put down our phones and actually instead live inside this world. Um, you know, these, these, these experiences already exist. Some would say that games are you know, not far off that experience already. Uh, but you, know, you think about products like Second Life that are essentially the metaverse on a screen at the moment. Um, you know, it's a VR version of that, really. So, you know, this idea of having a second world or a, or a world that we live within in a virtual space, whether we go for drinks with friends um, and, and how we do all that. Although I have to tell you, if you've ever tried to take a drink of something wearing a VR headset, they're going to have to figure all that out first because these, the, these are the challenges, I think. Um, you've got to almost tip your head back off its axis uh, in order to achieve that. Um, but, you know, I, I do think there's something in this and I think there's something quite enjoyable about it. There's a lot of people who will benefit from this, especially not just the people who are, you know, in communities that are maybe remote, but also for people who just, you know, don't like necessarily going out into the big world. I've got to say, Mark, I'm one of them. I'm one of those disabled people that doesn't really enjoy getting into the big city and, you know, going for a drink or going to a restaurant. The challenge in that, the anxiety that that can bring is sometimes a bit overwhelming. Doing it in a virtual space where you're in full control and then when you're feeling a bit overwhelmed by it, you can just take off the headset and still be in the place you started 
That sounds pretty good to me. Steven, they're doing this, this is flight simulation. Like if you look at flight simulators, that's what they're doing. They're giving you a safe environment to learn the tools in a way that you'll be able to practically take them ahead. Listen, I, I wanna interrupt you there because I wanna bring our next guest on a bit early because he's standing by, ready to come on, but I wanted to define what the metaverse is in, in plain English terms for everybody. Now, Chris Matthew is a, a self-proclaimed hacker of all things metaverse. He's been talking augmented reality, um, virtual reality in so many different ways, shapes or forms in his life. He's an entrepreneur, he's a businessman, he's a, an incredible creative mind and I've been following him on LinkedIn for a very, very long time. And when the idea of this episode came up, I said, I have to reach out to Chris and get him on the show because I think we're gonna have a really fun conversation. Now, Chris, was that an adequate introduction to, to who you are, Mr. Matthew? Oh, Mark, thank you and, and you're too kind. <laughs> I enjoyed the intro and yes. So Chris Matthew is with us a bit early, our guest on this week's show, Chris. We've introduced you. You've heard our, our conversation off the top of the show. I need you in plain English. Tell us, what is the metaverse? This isn't a new concept, is it? The simple definition I use frequently for the metaverse, it's a, it's a transformation of the internet from 2D websites into 3D web spaces. That's how I look at it. And you can go crazy deep on that, you know, that definition and, and talk about you know, things like the spatial web, like what's the web going to look like when it doesn't have screens anymore? You know, you can talk about all stuff, but I think at, at the root, it's moving, transitioning from 2D websites into 3D spaces that are immersive. That's exactly what I thought. So you know what, Chris, stick around. He is Chris Matthew, our guest on this week's edition of Double Tap TV. Stephen Scott is with us, of course. I am Marco Flalo. We're going to take a quick break and come back and let's dive into all the questions we have about the metaverse in just a moment here on Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash double tap. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here each and every single week. Of course, if you want to get in touch, the email address is feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada with the hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. I'm sure you guys are going to have questions about this week's show. We are talking all things metaverse, and our guest this week is Chris Matthew, hacker, and I, I wish I could probably adequately describe Chris, but, you know, he's been talking about the metaverse and all things augmented reality, virtual reality, extended reality, longer than I probably been alive, but but not to date him, Stephen. No, no, definitely not. Uh, Chris, it is great to have you here. I just want to ask, I mentioned up top about, you know, this idea of getting away from the rectangle in front of us, the phone, and moving towards a world where the internet is essentially all around us. You know, that's the world we live in at the moment, is we lie in bed staring at our phones or our iPads or our tablets late into the night. Um, is there a time, do you think, that we'll actually just live inside this this virtual world all around us? Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but like, like, like today, you know, all the, the meta and Microsoft, Facebook, everyone's really talking about this virtual metaverse where you're going to put on the Oculus goggles, you're going to be in VR. But like, as soon as the AR glasses get to the size of your regular eyeglasses and you see people wearing them outside, that's the transition from the virtual reality metaverse to the real world metaverse, I call it. Where, where you will, where everyone will be seeing a dragon flying in the street and they'll have to put on their glasses to see what everyone's looking up in the, in the sky about. Chris, why now? Like, what, what, what is it about now? This, is it the pandemic? Is it, I don't know, is the world not good enough around us? Why is now this mad rush for the metaverse? I think it's a land rush. If you kind of stop and think about it, like what did the world, when, when the internet first came out and the web browsers first started getting popular, they saw like how the world changed overnight with, with the web. And they're seeing that the metaverse is really that big of an opportunity of a land grab that they're all in. You know, they're investing hundreds of millions, maybe billions of dollars in, in building out their walled garden views of the metaverse. So we all talk about a metaverse. Like that's what all the technologists want to see, like from Ready Player One, you know, the Oasis kind of a thing. But uh, what's happening is this land rush is creating metaverses. So there's going to be thousands of, of corporate mega corp, you know, sponsored and owned megaverses uh, that, that aren't going to want people leaving it. You know, it's kind of like, you know, Facebook today. Do they want you to go to TikTok or something else? Of course not. 
Is it akin to a smart home, Chris? Do you think, you know, I think about smart homes, I think about the fact that it's so fragmented at the moment. You've got different brands pushing different technologies and those technologies don't always speak to the other technologies and on it goes. Um, do you think we'll get to a point where actually that will all start to even itself out and that bit by bit, the metaverse will become part of our lives rather than it, you know, all happening at once. Uh, it, it's going to be a, a decade. You know, like right now, it's the land grab for everyone creating their own metaverses. Um, and and to your point about the home and the IoT finally coming together, if you look at the race, it was the race to the human voice-powered AI that won. So it was the Amazon Echoes and, and the Google Homes that won, and then all the other IoT devices have to merge into them. You know, Chris, you're saying decades, but I think about gaming. You know, gaming, there are different platforms, yet there are game creators that build a title that is cross-compatible. So it really does bring in the world. You know, look at Fortnite, for example. You know, whether you're on a PlayStation, an Xbox, you know, formerly an iOS device, you know, you're able to play on all of them in this one simultaneous world. Do you think that the metaverse will intentionally collide like that and become one platform? Or is it, you know, third-party apps and games and stuff that might force it that direction. I think that's what it'll take. I think we'll see all the mega carps create their walled garden megaverks. So you might look up in the sky and some people connected to Facebook will see the, the dragon. Others connected to Google will see a, a flying whale. You know, like until they're connected, you won't you won't be seeing the same thing. But to your point, I think it'll be a grassroots effort of like, you know, open source projects that get traction that allow a user to have one avatar that travels with them across the metaverse into different worlds and like one set of inventory, like, you know, if I'm wearing glasses on my avatar, those should follow my avatar, you know, in every world he's going. And, and it's just like the web today, links will let you teleport into other worlds. So it'll be, we, we basically already have the metaverse 1.0 today and it's, it's the web with web protocols like WebXR, WebRTC that that enable us to do 3D immersive, you know, content on the web today. And it's, uh, it's the links, you know, that we're familiar with in the web today that will let us teleport into other worlds. So I think once these open source kind of success, grassroots successful metaverses start catching on and interoperating, that's the key word then I think the Facebooks and everyone else will say, well, well, we want access to those millions or billions of, of users too, so we better play nice. If you're just joining us, we are joined by Chris Matthew, expert on all things metaverse, but we've got to take a quick break and I want to reset a little bit because I want to dive into accessibility and how that works into the metaverse because on the first glance, the metaverse doesn't seem very accessible. However, if you think about it in a little bit more layman's terms, you realize that this has been accessible before it even was created. It is Double Tap TV. I am Mark Aflalo with Stephen Scott and our guest, Chris Matthew. We'll be back in just a moment. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. I am Mark Aflalo with Stephen Scott, and our guest this week is Chris Matthew, expert on all things metaverse. If you guys want to get involved, again, the email address is feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada with that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. Chris Matthew, you are the guy we're talking to about metaverse because you know your stuff. So I have a, an accessibility question here because a lot of people are going to be wondering this. How do you make this kind of experience accessible to all and i think about myself as a blind guy you know how does that work you know because if we don't make this kind of experience as accessible as possible then we, we miss out massively and a whole community of people miss out how do you deal with that yeah it's a huge divide like the metaverse i would say is probably 80 percent visual um the, the the saving grace i think for for that community is probably the spatial audio that's coming out there's tons of advances in spatial audio and what i mean by that is is really two or threefold um one the further away someone is from you in in this virtual reality or even even this teleporting uh, hologram experience, the louder or softer their voice is. So you can tell kind of by them speaking the distance they are from you. 
And then there's a concept of 360 degree audio uh, it's, it's related to spatial audio and Apple's doing a ton with a lot of the new AirPods and Air, the, the headphones, new head maxes they have, where if someone is behind you, you hear them behind you or off like to the side. So it's a 360 degree uh, algorithm of the audio. So like, I think you, know, you hear a lot of people saying Zoom fatigue, like they are, they are tired of the video. I'm seeing the spatial audio, like companies like High Fidelity are really making a lot of efforts on just like, let's just really get serious about improving audio, hi-fi, stereoscopic, um, uh, uh, spatial audio. And I think that's a win for everybody. You know, Chris, I think there's actually an opportunity here. When you think about it, the tools that blind users use today, such as voiceover, narrator, I mean, even tools and apps like Seeing AI and Microsoft, you know, it can you can hold the camera up and it can describe everything that's in front of you. If these tools, if that kind of technology is incorporated into the core of the metaverse, that descriptive technology, there's actually an incredible opportunity here for people who need that accessibility. Totally true. So like when I was working at, at Magic Leap, and this is public, you can Google looking for MICA. M I C A. She was a a, a, a lot. I, when you see her, like with the glasses on, it's a live woman standing in front of you with like 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 blinking, breathing. She didn't talk yet, but you could. She would communicate with you non-verbally, and she was an AI bot, if you will, in the real world. So she, you could imagine those types of platforms evolving to what you just described where she's explaining things like in the metaverse that's happening. And then you could communicate with her to, to she would be like your, your next generation echo. <laughs> if you can imagine, like you could, you could see her if, if you have glasses or you could just speak with her and she would communicate to the IOT devices or to other people what you wanted to do. Now you put something up on your website that was rather interesting. It was a demo uh, where uh, you could use the regular website, but you could also go into this metaverse, this experience uh, on the screen. You didn't need to have glasses. You didn't need to have any special technology to do this. You essentially just navigated via your keyboard and your mouse, right? Um, why did you do that? And you know, what was the purpose of it? Was it to uh, show that these two worlds can coexist? Yeah. And, and it was kind of just thinking like, how do we transition to 3D? And I was thinking like Best Buy. Like, like Best Buy gets probably millions, if not billions of dollars in e-commerce off their bestbuy.com website, right? And I was thinking to myself, what if they had, what if they gave their customers the choice to choose the traditional 2D scroll and find my product or go into the Best Buy metaverse, if you will, and maybe the geek squad is is already in there. They're they're managing all like the countertops, you know, where the laptops are, the headphones are, and you could just walk through there and visit with other customers that are in you know the the big Best Buy virtual store, or you know talk to a geek squad person you know at the laptop station. Yeah, it was definitely cool, Chris. A cool example of how things could coexist like that. Now, final parting words, okay, Chris Matthew, expert on all things metaverse. What do you what do you see in the next two two years, three years, maybe like five years down the road? Where does this go? I think we're going to see a ton of hype and work, especially over the next five years, on virtual reality uh, metaverses. And I'm writing a blog post now about what I'm calling the inception verse. We're seeing companies like Nike creating metaverses inside of Roblox metaverses. So we're going to see this whole metaverses and metaverses, and it's going to get crazy for the next five years. What I'm hoping is that uh, we start, you know, there is some momentum in the open source world or, you know, interoperability between metaverses so that we can try to get back to that, that single web-based, you know, uh, metaverse. Um, and then what I see after that is that evolution into the spatial web and the real world metaverse where the AR and the VR will, will uh, intersect and we will see like, like VR people teleporting into the real world and, and Oh, it, it's going to get really fun and really interesting and lucrative, like not only lucrative for these mega corps, that's why they're investing in it, but we'll be able to work and play inside of the metaverse, which when we when I was at Magic League, we talked a lot about this idea of an infinite economy. So imagine like Disney's, the Disney's of the world 
who were who were fixed, you know, how many people they could get through their park in a single day. Well, if you could teleport to Disneyland, Disney World for 15 minutes between meetings or something like that, now you've just created an infinite economy through the use of this type of technology. That is Chris Matthew, hacker of all things metaverse, expert of all things metaverse. Thank you so much for being us uh, being with us this week on Double Tap TV. Stephen, I, I got to ask you, you know, do you feel like you actually learned anything this week? Because I, I feel like we could probably take another episode and probably debrief on some of the benefits of this metaverse concept. I mean, just imagine the ability to test assistive, assistive technology, like you said off the top of the show, you know, like there's flight simulators to test flying and to learn that craft. Imagine you can, you know, develop new technology and bring it into a metaverse and test it in a safer environment. There are so many opportunities here, I think, that people just need to harness. Well, it's like any new platform, isn't it? You know, we think about the iPhone when it came along. Uh, a lot of people said, yeah, that's great. Nice. Touchscreen. Oh, OK. Now what? And then apps were developed. And then we saw the potential uh, of using that display, that that screen, that style of, of platform. And the same will happen here. And the difference being, of course, because we've done this before, because we've gone into the world of apps and skills and experiences, uh, companies are now aware of what is possible and at least aware of how to develop for this. And companies already are developing for this. You can imagine big stores uh, you know, starting to create their own catalogs or their own inventory in this way. Uh, it's gonna make for a very interesting experience, but as you say as well, you know, the accessibility side of it, it has to be there, that's the first thing. It just has to be part of this, and I believe it will. Uh, but, you know, also the opportunities for blind people to learn in that space as well, um, I think are just incredible. And I think it will be, it's, the great thing is it will be in our lifetime. What do you guys think at home? Feedback at ami.ca is our email address. Reach out on Twitter, it is at DoubleTapCanada, and use the hashtag which is Ask Double Tap. We're curious to know what you think. On behalf of Chris Matthew, our guest this week, and Stephen Scott, I am Marka Flalo. We will catch you on our next episode of Double Tap TV. Hosted and written by Marka Flalo and Stephen Scott. Editing and motion graphics, Jordan Steves. Integrated described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director of production, Kara Nye. Director of programming, Brian Perdue. VP content development and programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2022, Accessible Media, Inc.